Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity Open P1AM Industrial Arduino GPIO Inputs and Outputs. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my screen, we'll see the general specifications of our industrial um, Arduino shield or our expansion unit and which mounts on the left side of the actual CPU unit, the P1AM-100 CPU. Now we're going to be looking at the wiring and programming of this input and output industrial rated shield that mounts on the left side of that yeah, CPU unit. So here's my general specifications. And again, note that it, this is CSA, UL, and CE approved uh, product. And what it will do is we have the expansion uh, bus and it's available on the left hand side of that unit. Our power supply here if we use the actual bus unit itself. And then we have all the pins here. And what this card will do is actually bring those pins to the front terminal block that we can then wire to. And here are all of my uh, GPIO pins that we can have. So we have analog input, we have analog output, we have digital input, we have digital output. We also have communication pins. And these are the actual pin numbers that we will be using or what it takes from that bus unit to the main terminal block. So we have the whole card is 3.3 volt supply. So that's our supply output on the pin itself that we can use and we will be using that. Then we have a, a GPIO, so input and output. It's an analog in as well as an analog output. So again, unlike a PLC, when we have inputs and outputs and analog in and analog out, they're separate cards. Within the Arduino package, each input or output we have to look at it to actually see because they have multiple multiple functions that can be used for that purpose or that pin location. So that's the first one here. Again, we can use that as input or an output, an analog in or an analog out. Then we have a, an IO or we have an analog in and an interrupt on A1. So an interrupt, like we talked before, will automatically, when during the programming, stop what it's doing and run this routine and come back to the main program. So that pin can actually be used as an interrupt function. And that's for A1 and A2. Now A5 is an I.O. as well as an analog in. And that's A6 as well. Then we have our digital inputs or D0. So we this acts as a Again, an I.O. point, a pulse width modulated, or an interrupt. So pulse width modulated is actually means that um, it will split up the signal for us. And we'll look at a diagram of how that actually happens on the digital input. And it actually mimics a, uh, if I look at it on a, on a multimeter and look at the voltage, it'll actually look like an analog but it's really a pulse width modulated signal that we send out of this pin and that's for zero one then we also have four six and seven all have that same function then we have pin number two and three we have a io and we have our pulse width modulated as well then we have uh, pin 11 and pin 12 which is our SDA and SCL. And if we look at that, um, the S, the serial clock is the SCL serial clock, and we have the serial data. And these are used on our um, communication. It's a um, I2C bus, and it's generated by the master device. And then we have um, the data that goes on to that unit and the I, I2C communication bus it's popular and broadly used by many electronic devices because it can easily in, in implemented in many electronic circuits and require communication between master and multiple slave units or even multiple master units can actually talk to each other 
Then we have our transmit TX and our receive RX, which are serial devices. Now, these are serial devices using TTL logic at the 3.3 volts DC on the board. So we cannot connect this directly to a RS-232 serial port because the RS-232 actually uses um, plus or minus 12 volt usually. And so we can damage the board of this if we connect this serial directly. We have to go through other devices in order to communicate serially that way. And then we have our ground and our ground is just a reference value back to our supply. So let's go back to that pulse width modulated and just to explain that a little bit. So what we actually do is on our, um, we have a, what we call a duty cycle. So what we're doing is trying to vary um, the amount that we give an output in our pulse width modulated. And what we do is we turn on that digital output for a duration or a duty cycle. And if we have 50%, we have to turn on 50% of the time and off 50% of the time. And that's based on uh, our clock value for a sort of frequency. Then we have 75%. It's on more than it is off. Then we have a 25, so it's on less than it is off. So we can vary that from anywhere from um, say 99% on to 99% off. So you can see how we can change that variable. Now, now every pin that we just talked about is actually protected and it's protected by a circuit similar to this. And this protection provides um, uh, electrostatic discharge or ESD suppression. It provides over voltage and over current protection. And the supply or the VCC pin includes a uh, positive uh, temperature coefficient or PTC, which is a polyfuse switch. And it protects against the overloading of that 3.3 volts DC. So that's all included within that card, that industrial controller card at P1AM. Then we have our wiring diagram that we will be looking at. So at this time, let's take a look at our actual hardware that we have. So here we go, and we have it all wired up already. So here's my uh, P1AM GPIO, where my terminal blocks here. We have our CPU unit, so you see it mounts on the left-hand side of this unit. Then we have, um, we've wired this up, so our positive voltage goes to our breadboard under our positive here, and our negative, or our ground, is going to the ground. And we have, first of all, our analog, A1. It's actually going, it's a uh, potentiometer, it's 10K, which is located right here. And it's going to back into A1, giving us an analog input signal. Then we have a switch located right here. And that switch is going into D2, back into our card. And you can see that we've provided uh, resistors here to actually protect that circuit from um, voltage. Even though we have it already built into the card, if we eliminate those switches, it would still work. However, I'm just showing this so that we can do our full protection of this card itself. Then we have our analog out and it's going to the first LED, light emitting diode. Then we have our first digital out, D0. And then we have D1 out. So again, all three of these circuits are the, the same. It has a 220 ohm resistor on there going to the LED. So in the, the voltage output, we're actually uh, changing that voltage to vary the intensity of that LED. With the D0, we're going to use pulse width modulated. And we're going to change the, again, the intensity of that LED from our signal with that. And then our digital output, we're just going to use off a switch and turn that on and off of that switch. So let's take a look at our program itself. And here it is right here. And it's a very straightforward program. What you'll see is that um, on our setup, 
we have our start so we're using our serial port and our serial port will uh, just be 115,200 baud uh, 891 is going to be our monitor port then what we're going to do is we put in two lines of C++ code that actually says all of our analog write and all of our analog read are 10-bit resolution. And our 10-bit resolution, if we look at a, a calculator here, we'll hit View and hit Programmer. And let's go binary. 10 bits means that we have 10 bits. And that's 10 bits there. If we convert that back into hex, a decimal, it looks like that. If we go to decimal, it's 1023 resolution. So our analog, we're, we're specifying, that's going back to uh, 1023 resolutions as I move that pot or potentiometer back and forth. So just a quick method of, of determining different types of numbering systems using the Windows calculator. So then on, during our loop, we're gonna set our analog based on our potentiometer to the first analog output. So that's gonna be our first LED switch or light. Then we're gonna take our, the first digital one and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna set that analog to it. Even though we say set analog, it's really doing going to bring it back into pulse width modulation, which then changed that duty cycle as we shown before. Then what we do is we will look at our digital IO. So it's gonna get the digital input D2 and we're going to, if it's um, if it's high, then we're going to set D1 high. If it's low, we're going to set D1 low. So based on the switch, it turns on and off the third LED. Then what we have, if, if the CPU switch is on, we are going to write out to our monitor so that we can actually see what the analog value is going to be on that first pin. So that's our program. And what we do is we just verify it. And once we've verified, um, again, Productivity Blocks will convert this into a C++ for program for me. So I'm not going to pause it, and then we can transfer that to our actual unit. So we upload it to the actual unit, and then we can actually um, monitor using our serial monitor and we'll be able to see once we turn on that switch. So let's just take a look now and we actually go to our, our physical hardware. We have our multimeter here set up so that we can actually view our voltage that we're sending out or sending in through our, our unit here. And let's just turn on our CPU switch that'll start sending our values of what we're sending to our unit. So currently right now it's about 638, 32. So it bounces around and that's the um, noise level that we have on our input signal. And so you see as we vary our unit, you see we go right up to um, the frequency, the highest frequency was 1023, which we saw on our calculator. That's our highest value. That's bring, being brought in, and you see our intensity of light is very bright. And then if we turn that down, you can see how our lights then go dim down. And you can see, again, our voltage level signal is going down here. So that is our analog in. Then we have our switch located right here beside it. So if I turn that off, the light goes off. So if the input is on or the voltage is going into the input, it turns on. So that is the circuit. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. Now, 
If you want the actual program, you can be downloaded on our website, again, at accautomation.ca. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.